Yeah, there you go. You got it. All right. Let me see. I listen okay. while updates. Let's make sure that everybody can hear me. No, it's not live yet on my end here, but it says it's live on YouTube. Let me see. Yeah, we're live. Refresh. Oh, look at that. It's working. Okay. Listen, do me a favor. <laughs> Take over the show while I go shoot myself in the fucking head, okay? <laughs> it happens. I, I'm glad that it's happened just so you know how I feel. I have to, like, fix it on the spot. And it's Wait, very, hold on very a second. Hold on a second. Hold on. <laughs> so you know what the irony of this is i actually sent phil a message earlier today and i was like hey I can know. we get started a little bit earlier because i, I had you know i'm at the store and i gotta do all this stuff I know. and we ended up uh starting an hour late so <laughs> anyway yeah we're here that's all that matters we're here sorry everybody for the delay uh i'm glad that you guys toughed it out and uh, and waited for us uh, cause we really don't have anything to say. So, <laughs> so yeah, you pretty much waited for nothing. <laughs> yep. But, uh, Hey buddy, what's going on? You know, it's just, it's unbelievable. It, it's like, it, I swear at times computers know when you're in a rush, they know yeah. when you're in a hurry. I, I, it, I haven't had an update take that long in literally a year, literally a motherfucking year. It's Murphy's Law, man. And, and like right before, and then every everything's working. The computer comes back, and I go live, and it starts giving me an error, giving me an error, giving me error. So I rebooted the machine again, came back, and it, and it worked. It worked just like it's always worked for me every time in the past. <laughs> it's okay. It's over with. It's working now, and it's done. That's all that matters. But it I'm is hot. what it is. I'm, I'm trying to I'm teach you. I'm, I'm steamy. I'm trying I'm to hot. teach you stuff that is beyond our control. There's nothing that we can do about it, right? By the way, I want to say a big Kalispera, Seolus to Selinus. There's a bunch of Greek people that are watching because the time now is earlier than what we usually do the DP show. So there's a bunch of Greek people on there. So uh, I, I yeah. want to say I want to say hello to all the Greek people. I want to apologize for the show starting late to all the Greek people, uh, and uh, I, I can't wait to come back and hang out with the Greek people. And um, there was something else that I want to say. Oh yeah. Um, my my Facebook page right now is covered with the, all of those alien Greek characters. There's a lot. Yeah. Of, there's a lot yeah. of Greek characters on my uh, on my Facebook right now. I'm not sure yeah. what it says. I, I'm sure it's pretty it's good. all good. I'm sure, it's good stuff. It's all good. Okay. There's yeah. nothing bad. Okay. But uh, yeah, I had a little bit of um, you know, they they don't allow Americans to come in, and um, I had a little bit of a interesting story when I left. I get to Chattanooga at the airport. And, you know, you have, you know, the American Airlines employee from Chattanooga that they, they, they just, you know, I'm not going to say they don't take their job seriously, <laughs> but they would rather be any other fucking place than working <laughs> for American Airlines in Chattanooga, dealing with a Greek guy that has to connect three airports and get to Greece. Um, so she asked me for my papers. I gave her my Greek ID. Uh, which uh, unfortunately has Dimitri Agrafiotis on there, unlike my passport that says Jimmy Agrafiotis. So she gets a little bit confused, right? It's my picture on there. It's my last name, same date of birth, but my first name is different. And she's looking for an expiration date, which Greek IDs do not have. So immediately her brain is in freeze mode. So I said, listen, don't worry about my Greek ID. Give that back to me. Here is a paper that I have with me from the Greek embassy in the United States of America, official paper that says Jimmy Agrafiotis is a Greek national and he can travel to Greece. Official paper with my passport on number on there and everything. So she takes that, she punches it in and she says, well, what it's asking me for an expiration date. I said, well, Here's a solution. Just put the expiration date of my passport on there. Done. No issues whatsoever. I'm telling her what to do for her job. Punching it in. Then she says, uh, what is your visa? A what? She says, uh, a visa. You need a visa. I said, uh, you, there was never a requirement for a visa to enter Greece from America. That, that does just not exist. So she calls the supervisor. 
you know, I get on the phone with the supervisor, whatever. We, we take care of it. We punch it in. She checks me in. We're all good to go. I leave Chattanooga. I get to Dallas. I have a four or five hour layover. I take the flight from Dallas to London, our favorite airport. Right, Phil? That's yeah. our favorite place to go. Uh, strongest security in all of the world is in London. Like the security there is unbelievable. Um, and I have to pass security again. I get to the uh, passport control. They stamp my passport. They ask for the paper that I can go into Greece. I give them the paper to go into Greece. Now they say you have to go to security. Of course, there's no fast track lane. There's nothing because of Corona. I get to the security checkpoint. I put my bag in and what happens, obviously, as always in London, they pull my bag to the side. (laughs) I get to the lady that's going to look at my bag. She opens it up. She opens up this little... This is like my little vape purse, right? She opens up my little, I have all my devices inside and liquids and all that. And she swabs it, right? She puts it in the machine. Uh, It turns red, Phil, like alert or whatever, you know. (laughs) I'm like, oh shit. So she does it a second time. She swabs it again, puts it in the machine, alert. Now she's like on the phone, walkie talkies, supervisor comes down and i'm like what the fuck is going on she's like well we got an alert i'm gonna have to test it again so she tests it again she puts it inside alert again i said listen hon i don't know the only thing i could think of feel unlike other trips i had with me this you know uh design from um oh, from yeah. Athanasios. Mm-hmm. i had this mod with me the only thing I can think of is like the tube is like, I don't know, made out of some metal that bullets are made out of, or there's <laughs> volcanic ash in the wood or some shit like that. Cause, cause it was coming back as explosives. Really? So she said, this is the only thing that was different in my bag than when I usually fly. So she said, since you got three alerts, uh, we're going to have to give you extra security. And, you know, I'm calm. I'm like, you know, it is what it is. I said, no problem. I said, we'll do whatever you want to do. So she pulls me to the side and I got to take off my shoes and I get the full, you know, full on grope, you know, pat down up to my balls, my taint, my crack. Yeah, but, but, you, but you enjoy that, though, a little bit. It was fun. It yeah, was okay, fun. There you go. I, I, he could have bought me a drink afterwards. I think that would have completed the date. But um, so she, he gives me the full pat down. They check all my bags and they finally let me go. So... You know, wasted about 30 minutes at the London security uh, thing. Um, I finally get on the plane. I arrive in Greece. And now in Greece, as we did in July, I'm expecting to have a COVID test. Um, I get down to the passport control. I show my form that has a little QR code, shows I'm coming from America. The girl says, you know, go here or whatever. So I go to that lane and it's passport control. So I give my passport, I say hello to the guy. He stamps it and gives it to me and says, okay, go ahead. And I was like, aren't you gonna test for COVID? And the guy literally says to me, he's like, well, if they didn't tell you back then, don't worry about it. (laughs) I'm like, all right, like, okay. So I, I come through, I go get my bags. Now keep in mind, I have three suitcases and a carry-on. I have a lot of stuff. I have a bunch of liquids in my bag that I'm taking there for testing. I have a bunch of motorcycle parts that Dr. Fasalinos had ordered for me to bring him in. Anyway, it's a mess. I'm like, I'm gonna get fucked in customs. There's just no way. I couldn't carry my bags. I had to get one of those carts because it's too much, right? So I have my cart loaded up with all these bags and I'm heading towards customs. I'm like, they're gonna see this young, good looking guy with four bags. They're just gonna pull me over. You know, I'm fucked. I get to customs. There's not a soul to be seen there. Nobody. Really? I mean, nobody. As soon as that gate opened up, you know, the sliding door feel, I yeah. just jetted. I was like, oh, you <laughs> snooze, you lose. <laughs> as soon as I crossed that gate, I was home free. So anyway, I got here, but, uh, you know, it was uh, it was all good. Well, most of our travel is pretty interesting. I, I think I think the Washington, D.C. trip was one of our smoothest trips ever, and we drove half of that. Well, you drove yeah. half of that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, uh, it was. I mean, it, look, I understand during COVID times and all that, everybody's tense, and you know, you just have to, you know, take it with a smile. There's nothing really that you can do. I have come to the realization that a lot of these people are under a lot of stress as well, too. And if you, if you become uh, aggravated with them, it doesn't really help the situation. 
So even in London, the supervisor, she was really nice. And she, could, she was like, oh, thank you so much for understanding. I was like, oh, that's fine. Can I have your number? Uh, it didn't work. But, <laughs> but I mean, it was, you know, I, it is what it is. That's how life is now. We I just know. have to change, you know? I know. Um, it, it, like, even with um, uh, my, my boat. So, you know, I've been waiting for warranty uh, work on the boat, right? Yeah. And it's going on five months, five months to get the parts <laughs> in. Ordinarily, I would be at the dealership losing my shit right i mean i i would they, they would have i would go there and they would have to arrest me because i'd be an animal but like in this case i i i truly know that there's a lack of parts because of covid yeah. um like even the uh, the motorsports uh place here you can't you can't buy jet skis there's yeah. none they're all gone and they can't get they can't get new ones in by the way i went side by side because i think we could demonstrate this can we yes I think we can. Hold on. Let me see which side I'm looking at. Oh, yeah, I'm on the other, the other side. side. Hold on. Yeah, hold on. Go to the other side. Uh, no, I got to turn it, it this it way. Yep, yeah, there, there we go. go. So if you put these together, hold on. Let me try to get it. That I'm, I'm, I am at a new – I had to actually make this. So that's a heart. That's how Athanasios made those for us. If you put them together, they make one nice heart. Put your hand, and, the, put your hand on the other side of the device. Hold the other side. No, the other side. Hold the other oh, side. Oh, fuck me. Hold on. Why Wait. is it reversed like that? Oh, there we go. There you go. Oh, see? And get a little closer. Oh, and it makes a heart. Oh, Look at yeah. That. Okay? And these are, actually, these are actually cut from the uh, same piece of wood. Stab yeah, wood. it's one wood, one two wood. cups. Two, cu <laughs> two, two, two cups, one girl. Oh, whatever. <laughs> hey, it's like the uh, DP show, right? It's like the DP show, yeah. Oh, my God. Hey, I got some news for you. Um, Hit me. I, I, I want to just go over uh, real quickly on how to make um, authentic Greek pork souvlaki. Okay. okay. No, step one. Right. Step, step one. one. Um, find yourself a Greek friend uh, like you. Right? <laughs> yeah, okay. Step two, uh, have uh -huh. him come over to the house and, and, and make a bunch of it. And uh -huh. step three, have him put it in the freezer. Okay. <laughs> freezer for you. In the freezer. You're right. And then step four is you take it out of the freezer. Uh -huh. right? You take it out of the freezer uh, and, and you go ahead and you skewer it like that. Right. Oh, look at that. Right now you get yelled at. You might get yelled at a little bit here because you used metal skewers and not wood skewers. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. all good. Uh, you go ahead and grill it. Now you do. Yeah, you need to find you need to find a, a neighbor now who's also Greek and can make some really, really good Sentiki. tzatziki sauce. Okay. Yes. So I got this. And then you put it all together and look at that. Look Was it good? Thing. Was it delicious? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Good. I'm glad you enjoyed so it, buddy. Good. And now it's gone. That's all you gotta do. Cooking is easy. It's so easy. You know, like, you make authentic Greek food. Look at that. Look at how good that. I even got a little pita bread, grilled it up, put it underneath that. Look at that. Is that a good? That looks right good. There. That does look good. That does look good. I, I'm, I'm gonna have to go get some souvlaki now. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, chances are you're gonna get real good souvlaki where you yeah. are right now. Yeah. Everybody, I haven't eaten yet. Everybody knows that Dimitri's in Greece, right? In case you're wondering why he's like all blocky yeah. and everything. I, I had to go to the store today uh, to get this cheap microphone. to Because I, I, I'm at my office in um, in Athens at the new store. I built my office up here, but it didn't really have anything. I bought a monitor to connect my laptop to. And then I bought this cheap headset and then a, a, a camera because the laptop camera is horrible. So that, so I'll be able to to come on and do this. I had a couple of Zoom meetings earlier as well, too. But um, the Internet's a little iffy here. Like, it literally took me like an hour to upload a three-minute video. But whatever. We made it happen. That's all that matters, I guess. And uh, and we're here uh, joining you with uh, with some beautiful COVID DP entertainment. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, I, I got some more stuff for you. You know how, uh, how into your... Uh your motorcycle you are and accessorizing yes. it and yes yeah, i mean we did we did the uh we did the live uh we did the ride you know the very the very scary yeah, ride very with, short very short ride I with, all the, uh, with all the tricks well i've done something to my bicycle um really yeah let me see i bought this uh water bottle this sports water bottle <laughs> right here it's, really, it's, it's uh it's supposed to be very good very highly rated on amazon yeah. it says camelback on it and this uh -huh. is the uh the podium insulated now I've wow. ridden I've ridden with this twice, uh -huh. uh, and it actually keeps the water very cool. Yeah, so that's exciting stuff, right there. That's there you uh, you're just living adventurous, my friend. That's all you're living adventurous. Yes, yes. Uh, by the way, my rib cage still hurts of you uh, being on the back of the bike and squeezing me. I still have. <laughs> I 
still have marks on my rib cage <laughs> in the back. I was really holding on tight. Uh, I really was. I really was. I was holding on tight. You know, there was a, there was a, we had some bad weather here a couple of days ago. Like I came, a typhoon came by Greece. I mean, it's just my fucking luck, you know. Bars closing at twelve o'clock because of Corona. Uh, typhoon came by. The economy is suffering because of the the restrictions and the lockdowns and all that. It's just been bad. Thankfully, in Athens, we were spared. Nothing happened here, but some of the islands and some of the rural areas got really devastated with this this bad storm that came by. But everything is good now. But I mean, it's just been our 2020 sucks, man. It's just been a it's just been a rough year. It's just uh, um. I just wanted to be over with. Let's go back to normal life, oh man. Oh my it just god, sucks. you, you and me both. I can't, I can't. I literally can't take it anymore. Not, not that like we're anywhere near as bad off as some people out there. I mean, really, we're blessed compared to uh, what some people are going through. But I mean, I understand. I, 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 I haven't seen my family in so long. It's like almost a year yeah. that I've seen. Yeah, I haven't seen my family. It's killing me. Um, yeah. And and. I just had the last of mom's frozen sauce and meatballs. Mm. There's no more frozen sauce and meatballs in my freezer right now. I'm out. I'm completely That's out. That's a travesty. As really. a matter of fact, I want to tell you something very nice that I did, okay? So okay. I had Larry and Mo over uh, about a week ago, and okay. we had we had raviolis, and I had I took out some of mom's sauce, and there, uh-huh. was, there were a few meatballs, and Mo ate, like, all the meatballs. And she she didn't save any for anybody. Larry didn't get oh. any meatballs. Wow. No. Well, I mean, she has his balls too, so yeah, it's yeah, making yeah. difference. So <laughs> Larry, didn't, so when I took out the last of Mom's sauce and meatballs, I took I had two or three. That, that was that was it. I took them over to yeah. to Larry's and I gave them to Larry. I said, Larry, I felt really Aww. bad that you didn't get any Mom's meatballs. I said, Here Aww. you go. I said, Share them with Mo at your discretion. Right? You don't have. Oh, that's but, sweet. But yeah, that that's very sweet, sweet of you, buddy. Thanks, Dakota, for the super chat. Three ninety nine, oh, just you. because. Much love. Thank you so much. Much love right back to you, Dakota. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's let's talk a little bit uh, a few things that are serious, and mm-hmm. then we're going to get back to busting some balls as well, too. But you know, I, I I came to Greece on business. This is not a pleasure trip. Obviously, I have a lot of work here to do with uh, with opening the store, and um, you know, I can't have a grand opening like like. I would like to. All the stores that I open, you know, you've been to them. We do a big shinding thing. We have a DJ. We have catering. We have a bunch of vapors that come over, and we have a really good time. And unfortunately, we can't do that uh, because they don't allow uh, groups of people to assemble (laughs) together. So what I decided to do is launch two or three new things here in Greece simultaneously. That way uh, we can get new new users inside, new customers, smokers, which we desperately need in our industry. And then also an introduction to the store. I'm doing Friday, Saturday, and Sunday this weekend, a big, you know, meet and greet. Basically, it's going to happen all day. You can come anytime you want to. We're offering 30% off everything on the store. Uh, no, 15% everything on off in the store and 30% off in again products. And then uh, with every purchase, we're doing a big uh, drawing. We have five prizes. But you know what the first prize is? The first prize is actually a cell phone, a Huawei P30 Pro Lite. No, a Huawei P30 Lite. They're, they're the allowed in Greece, right? They're allowed in Greece? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. It's just and then the, the second US pr- where those are not allowed. The second prize is an Aries 2 limited edition, oh. which is not for sale anywhere. And then some liquids and some other devices and stuff like that for the prizes. So that's what I'm doing. At the same time, I launched uh, a smoker conversion program in all the stores, uh, which I'll talk about here in a little bit, trying to bring new customers inside. And I'm going to tell you later on why. And then the third thing that I launched this week is PP Tears, this delicious uh, fruit drops. Uh, the, line, the line is actually called Drops, um, the new line. The first liquid is fruit drops, and then there's going to be custard drops. There's going to be other stuff that goes along with it. But the first one is just a fruit medley, pineapple, raspberries, oranges, sanguini. I mean, the whole thing is just a delicious fruit salad in your mouth. Very nice label as well, too. My guy, Vape My Noob, uh, that works at the store, and and is also a YouTuber. He's the one that designed the label. And I think he did a fantastic job with it. And it comes in two versions, the regular one and, of course, you know, iced version, which is very, very cold, uh, just the way that I like it. But it's delicious. Um, it's basically like, have you seen the... 
the commercials where the women like pour milk on their bodies and it's in a slow motion. So imagine instead of milk, like a woman just pours like fruit on top of her. That's what it tastes like in your mouth. Like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what? I, I'll be honest with you though. Uh, I do think it would have sold you, you. You would sell more more if it was called Peepa Sardo's PP Tears. I think so. I think so. I, I, I kind of yeah, do. I, I kind of do. I contemplated on it. I <laughs> contemplated on it. Uh, I just wouldn't fit on the label uh, because it's delicious. Phil Busardo French PP Tears a la mode is the exact name of it. <laughs> it wouldn't fit on the label. I, that, I mean, that does sound good. I mean, like that, and and I mean, if you're gonna put out that flavor, you have to follow it up with uh, Phil's Love Juice, right? Because you, you've mentioned that flavor many times yeah. uh, as well, right? Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. But uh, I did shoot a little video for you if you want to play it um, from uh, the the new store. Just kind of give you uh, like a little idea of what it looks like. Sure, we can do that. Uh, and I'll just kind of I didn't want to put a lot of audio because there was some music playing in the background too. I don't want you to get flagged, but okay, here we go. This is beautiful Monastiraki Square. We've been here field together. This is the main street at Emu. And um, there's the new store. You're gonna see on the window all the stores I have this on the windows now where it says with 20 bucks you get a complete vaping package for you to quit smoking. So the question is, do you still smoke? All you need is 20 bucks to get rid of the cigarette. You get a complete vaping package to start. That's John, the manager here. He's been with me since day one. He worked at the other store. This is his store now. Obviously very heavy Inigan influence. You know, I have one uh, display that's all Inigan product. Um, like I do in all the stores, of course. Uh, we just you know, truly believe in the products for starters and for vapors alike. Uh, nice little color collections there. And you're going to see those are the packages that we've given away. I'll show them to you a little bit more in detail as well. And then as we move into the store, you're going to see a little bit more advanced um, equipment as well, too. Say hi, John. Don't be... <laughs> Poor John. Um... That's a little builder station, you know, where vapors can hang out and build their stuff. There's some more, some more of the, uh, you know, advanced other company uh, equipment that I, I'm a strong believer in this high up displays, you know, that people can just stand up and look at these uh, displays instead of having to bend over, you know, um, like your classic display cases. In the, in the display cases here, I've put wire, building supplies, and just some atomizers that are by themselves tanks and so forth these are some new light boxes one of them they brought the wrong uh, display but hopefully we'll have that fixed by the weekend but uh, just a little light up boxes you can put whatever you're running for special there through the week and of course you know the liquid featuring the Fabulous PB tears, front and center, and of course Tasaki, very very popular here in Greece. Tobacco line, four flavors now: regular tobacco, caramel, apple, and we just launched mint, menthol, which is basically like a menthol cigarette. A lot of places in Europe are banning menthol cigarettes, so it opens up the door to to try to get people to try vaping as well too. So yeah, that's uh, Liquid Puff and uh, Monastiraki. And just to give you an idea, uh, Phil, this, these are the two kits that I'm offering. So uh, either you're going to get an Endura uh, T18 uh, with a variable wattage and two 10 mil uh, bottles of liquid. If you prefer to have something that's tubular in your hands, right? Something that's uh, round. Uh, and you know, people that want something a little bit more discreet, I'm offering the EQ uh with two bottles of liquid so with 20 bucks you basically get 20 mils of liquid in the device and the goal here is a setup like that can get you hopefully through a week when you're making the transition that way you don't have to buy cigarettes and see if vaping is for you uh with the endure obviously you get two coils 
And then, you know, these are high milligram, 12 or 18. If you're vaping two, three mLs a day, you can get through six days of vaping without having to purchase anything. If you're spending five bucks a day for cigarettes, you're looking at 30 euro here with 20 euro investment, you can get it. And the reason why I'm doing this is folks in America need to realize that the tobacco industry is coming after us heavily with the harm reduction angle, okay? I don't think that the big tobacco companies ever would dream in a million years, if you asked them 10 years ago, if this vaping movement would be where it is today. If, if us as independents, without billions of dollars of marketing, uh, how are we able to convert literally millions of people worldwide to vaping? I think they're just as shocked as, uh, as we are, honestly, to be at the point that we are now. But what I've noticed more and more is that they're 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 relying heavily on the IQOS and they're they're making a big push on the IQOS here in Europe. But also, um, you're going to see it in America pretty soon. As soon as this PMTA fog clears up, you're going to see a huge push for for the IQOS in America. I want Phil to bring up some pictures that I took just this morning. This is the equivalent of a Best Buy in America. This is public. It's a big electronic supermarket, uh, one of the biggest chains in Greece. And Iquos has its own dedicated section in this store. They don't sell cigarettes. They don't sell vape products. Uh, but look, look at the marketing and the angle. Discover yourself uh, smoke-free, right? Cigarette, no uh, tar, no smoke. Uh, feel better. It has um, uh, a little iPad on there. You can something that me and Phil had talked about three years ago is to have an iPod, iPod inside that you can actually get more information about it. Two people dedicated on staff. You see them there with a the mask on in the store to help train you on how to buy, clean, and use this. Keep in mind, folks. I am going to reiterate. This is the equivalent of a best buy in America. There's no other tobacco products in this store, just the Iquos. So the reason why I'm doing this is because in order for us to compete with big tobacco, we need to be able to have entry products into vaping that are economical, that are easy to use, that are very simple, they're satisfying, and most importantly, way cheaper than cigarettes. Phil, if you go to the dual shot, I want to I want to bring up a question to you. I had a I met with a with somebody that works at Papastratos yesterday. It's a big the big Philip Morris affiliate here in Greece. And I asked him and I said, "Why do you think the Iquos is so popular in the Greek market?" Okay? We can only take the demographics for the Greek market. And big tobacco companies have done the groundwork for us, folks. Guess what he said? Guess what he said, Phil, is one of the biggest reasons why Icos is popular in Greece for people that are looking for a less harmful alternative. Stylish? Hip? Nope. Uh, those are all part of it. But keep going. Um, healthy? That's part of it, but it's not one of the top reasons. Um, now, all right. I'm not sure what they're selling the Icos for. Are they giving the device away in favor of... The, the sticks sometimes they run a special sometimes you know though if you call them they'll come to your house and sell it to you there if you want. great customer service that goes along with it great but the biggest thing is there's no version two there's no version three folks listen the fuck what i'm telling you right now one of the biggest problems of this vaping industry is this bullshit chase this bullshit chase for the dragon of updating fucking equipment every week. We need to stop this shit. We need to stop it today. You know, when somebody buys an Iquos, they don't have to worry about Smock putting a version two out in the market or a version three or having to buy the latest and the greatest. This is it. You buy the device. All you have to buy is the consumables. If you buy the, sometimes the device, they give it away for 15 euros. Sometimes they give it away for free as long as you buy the heat sticks. Listen to me, Phil. Try to understand what I'm telling you here. This constant battle of vapors of chasing the dragon and trying and looking at Facebook groups and, oh, this is the latest. This is the Aries 2 LE. You should go buy it. It's better than the Aries 2. And I'm talking about my own products. I'm not even talking about anything else. We need to stop this. When people get into vaping, a huge portion will leave vaping for that simple 
reason. They always think that the latest and the greatest, they're going to go spend 50, 60 euros. Their vaping is not going to change. It's not going to improve dramatically. In some cases, it's going to be worse than what they were already using. So my philosophy is, with Liquid Puff, and my philosophy is, hey, look, if you buy this, if you buy this with 20 bucks and you quit smoking, you don't need anything else. Now, listen, if you're in that three percentile that wants to buy the latest and the greatest and you want what's new and you like to build and you like to spend money, I'm not bashing you for that. Go ahead and do it. But if you quit smoking with this, you don't need anything else. And I think that that constant barrage of products and that constant hype has hurt this industry term tremendously in America. And I think it's starting to hurt worldwide as well. I mean, how many strawberry milkshakes do we need as far as liquids are concerned, for example? How many versions of the same tank do we need? At one point, the consumer will say, I've had enough. You know, all I want to do is quit smoking. So to my original point is, that's why the IQOS is successful. The IQOS is the IQOS. You're never going to see them coming up and say, hey, boys, hey, version two, IQOS coming now. It heats to 40 watts instead of 35 watts now. So it's going to give you a bigger cloud, right? So you'll be able to chase clouds. You're never going to see that from a tobacco company. But I think In order that's part of the problem. I mean, what you just said there is part of the problem because what are tobacco companies doing, right? What is Icos doing? Well, who are they after? They are after the smokers, nobody else. Yeah. After the smokers, nobody else. Our industry, I think, started that way, but totally lost direction. And now our industry continues to focus on the vapors. And I know Absolutely. This, and I know this because just about every mouth to lung product that I get now is nowhere near as tight as a cigarette. Yeah. So again, even even that that mouth to lung phrase, who who is it targeted for? Who is it for? And and you said it. You said it. It's for those folks that used to be direct lung cloud chasers, right? And yeah. Again, not that there's anything wrong with that, right? But are switching over back to mouth to lung with their high nicotine salts but they yeah. still want that looser draw. Yeah. I think if you look at the progression, what we were giving the, what we were telling customers, Phil, and let me tell you something, in Greece, there's a lot of good stores, but there's a lot of bad stores, just like everywhere in the world, I guess, right? When you're telling a customer to upgrade, what you're telling them, and what you're telling them is to spend more money. It, 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 the definition of upgrade is not that you're going to get something that's going to improve your vaping satisfaction. It's going to either A, <laughs> displease you because it might take you to a different style of vaping through an upgrade. Are you catching what I'm saying? So you might be using the Endura that's very, very tight and oh, yeah. your upgrade is going to be a sub-ohm tank. Is that really an upgrade? Or is that just a different direction of vaping? So when you give this impression to the customer, the customer at some point is going to realize, and trust me, here in Greece, we have lost a lot of customers like that. We have lost, a, they just, they're, they're, they reach a point where they're like, fuck, you know, I'm spending more money than I did on cigarettes. And they just get tired of it. They go back to something that's simple. In the IQOS, even though there is some, work involved and maybe in the next dp show i'll just buy an iquos and show you how it's working there is some work involved it's always simple and it's always consistent there's no variables there's nothing that changes into that and it's very important for a smoker that has the ritual of a cigarette that hasn't changed since the invention of a cigarette <laughs> that ritual has not it's very important for them to get into a ritual as well too in order for the product to work and my way of combating that is trying this 20 euro deal of, hey, come inside. You don't have to spend a lot of money. 
And if you're happy with what you have, continue to use the Endura. Continue to. And if you want to upgrade by yourself, I will make my recommendations not based on what I'm going to make more money of, but based on what I believe at that stage of the journey that you are as an ex-smoker that would probably satisfy you as more. And and more people need to do that. This is the only way we're going to be able to combat Philip Morris and BAT and all these other companies that finally realized, hey, reduced harm products, uh, uh, nicotine products is the future, right? We need to compete in that space. So let's get out there and aggressively go after the smoker and tell them we are the best option for reduced harm, not the independent vape shop that you're going there and you're spending, you know, all your money every month trying to buy the latest and the greatest. Uh, again, that's just my opinion. You know, if you don't agree, I don't give a shit. I mean, I respect your opinion if you think that I'm wrong. Uh, but being in the business here in Greece and seeing, getting feedback from customers and talking to vapors, talking to people that try to vaping that went to IQOS or talking to dedicated IQOS users. The second night I'm here, I went with Steve, the DJ. He introduced me to his best man and his wife and their son. We all went out to dinner to a steakhouse. Both of them pulled out an IQOS. I'm sitting there. I had my little, you know, pod system from Minikin and I had a tank and I just listened to them. I never try to for when people are using an IQOS, I never try to tell them try vaping because IQOS is less harmful than cigarettes. But I listened to them talking about IQOS and feel they really they've really fell into that concept that this product is less harmful. It's consistent. They can find heat sticks everywhere in a fucking best buy. I can find heat sticks, right? So imagine every other outlet that sells any kind of form of these products, they're going to be able to find that heat stick. That consistency is what people are looking after. Now, not everybody. There's a small percentage of people that do want to go down the hobbyist route. Absolutely. And we're more than happy to cater those, to cater to those. But don't think for a second that that 3% is going to keep stores in business. It's just not going to happen. And I think that we have plenty of examples in the market from other marketplaces like the U.S. that that is a true statement. You know, have you um, have you had the opportunity? Whoa, that's that's not right at all. Hold on a second. Oh, nice. I'm yeah, just well, like, I don't, like, I don't know what right behind my ass there. on that's that shot right there. Hold yeah, on. I'm like, behind, oh, like, hey. <laughs> oh, shit, have you it. um, have you had the opportunity to share? Because we, we never got to it on the Smoker Show. Uh, there's that um, uh, that document going around that shows the harm level uh, between a cigarette and icos and vaping as we know it. Yeah. Nicotine vaping is. Ha have you brought? A, a, although the icos is still safer than smoking, and, and I agree that if, if somebody's using it, great, and yeah. not smoking, great. Um, but have you shared that with people? And if you have, what's been the response? I don't necessarily, I mean, if somebody asks me about it, I do bring it up, but I try, I tr people that are dedicated IQOS users, if you're a believer in harm reduction like we are, it's hard for me to debate them because they are using a safer product. Now, if somebody that has an IQOS doesn't like it or wants to try vaping, I'll get in and explain it more in detail, but just regular IQOS users that I interact with, um, it... <laughs> This, this other friend of mine in Ayabaraskevi, where I'm from, told me, he's like, oh, I use Ico, so I hope you don't mind. And I'm like, no, of course I don't mind. Why would I mind? You know, I, that's what, if, that, if, if you're a dedicated Ico user, I mean, you, tr you transition fully to that product, you've reduced your harm. There's nothing, you know, there's nothing that I can tell them to try to per convince them to try vaping unless they want to. And they start, you know, talking to me about it. But most of the people that are using the Ico don't want to hear anything about vaping. You know, there's this, there's, there's the, I saw a comment from a Greek guy inside. It, it does smell the Iquos, uh, what the Iquos puts out smells like somebody has been wearing a sock for 10 days and then peed on it. Well, it that's exactly like what it's, that's, that's exactly what it's saying. It's, it's a different, it's a more distinct, a cigarette smells bad, okay, to me now. But Icos has a more distinct aroma of pee and wet sock. 
and it, it's it's uh, that, that's one of the drawbacks. You know, uh, uh, and I and I hear this a lot from people that use it. Yeah. So to all the people that are asking in, in the uh, in the thread, and we'll try to get one on the show. But what the ICOS is, it's it's a little device, okay, and it has uh, basically filaments on the end of it. And what you do is you take what they call a heat stick, which is basically a cigarette. It's basically a cigarette with no filter. It has a different formula of tobacco in it, and it sits on that filament. And it's that filament that gets hot, okay? And instead of burning the tobacco, it releases like a vapor from the tobacco, which contains the nicotine. However, those heat sticks still have all of the, the the chemicals that that cigarettes have right so there's you know when you when you look at the safety of an icos next to the safety of vaping there's a lot you know if if vaping is this safe icos is this safe cigarettes is this safe there's levels to all of this guys yes but we yeah. we can't talk negatively about the icos because it's still harm reduction it's still harm I'm, reduction. I'm going to go buy one and sh and do the process and show it to you. I'm actually going to – I mean, I hate it. I really – not. listen, it's not like I hate big tobacco companies and all that. Trust me, it's not that. Um, I'm going to buy it and, and go through the whole process because they actually sit with you for as long as you want, an hour, and explain to you the whole process of how it works and all that. They, they're very, very trained on it. Um, and, and then on the next DP show, I'll just go through the process and show you how to, you know, how it works and, and, uh, and smoke one, I guess, for you here live on the show. Um, but look, I, I find it, I find it very interesting that we haven't really thought about that, the upgrade factor. And when this guy told me yesterday, I can't, I mean, I can't tell you who it is, but he's a pretty high level executive. When this guy told me that there's no version two, even though there is, like there is, there is another iQOS that's on the market that's a little bit more better battery life and stuff like that. The product doesn't change every week, you know. <laughs> You'll get a new iQOS every six, seven years. That's the that's the lifespan of the product. So um, I found it really interesting when he said that to me. When there's not a version two, and and then if you think about it closely. I'm sure that if you talk within your circle of friends that have tried vaping and maybe got away from vaping, that that was one of the factors that probably turned them off as well, too. They felt maybe the equipment that they were using was inadequate, it's something me and Phil have heard multiple times. Uh, they don't feel like they fit in. They feel like when they go to the stores, there's a lot of pressure for them to upgrade or they can't find replacements. Uh, for the devices that they were sold at a store. Look, it's something that me and Phil bring up all the time. And you're going to say, well, you work for Anakin, and that's why you would say it. But no, the truth is that when a coil is put on the market, the longevity of that coil doesn't necessarily reflect the company. Smock, Vaporesso, even Anakin have put products on the market that you can't find the coil for three months later. Yeah. So if I quit smoking with this and I can't find the coil a month later, guess what I'm forced to do? I'm forced to buy a new device. I am forced. I don't have another option right. if I can't find the replacement coils for that. How many products have come on the market that were hyped, right? Hyped stores bottom for starter kits and then two months later they can't get replacement calls for imagine all the customers that bought those devices so just some things to think about on a serious note just some stuff to think about for the stores and for the vapors as we're moving into this new competition phase i would call it because this is exactly what it is us competing against big tobacco for the same customer which is the smoker Right. So there's a competition going on. What are we going to we know what they're doing. They're doing it very well. What are we going to do as an industry? What are we going to do as the independent vapor industry to try to lure more smokers into our stores? Because what we have been doing so far has not been working or it's slowed down. Our, my new customers have slowed down. And, and hopefully even with this special, we started the special this last week. I think total we've we've given away seven between three stores, that's not a lot. You know, I was hoping to get between 15 and 20 a week. Uh, now with the coronavirus and all that, I get it, I get it. So, you know, I can't really take in consideration what a normal work week would look like, but seven is seven. You know, maybe we those seven, we can get half of them to become vapors. That's a huge win for me, for my business, but it's also a huge win for, for vaping. But more stores need to do that. I, I, I'm talking to Inigan about maybe doing something 
cleverly as a, as a, as a, as an as a company in again trying to help other stores in Greece participate in something that's going to be more smoker involved even Iquos involved because if somebody invests 40 Iquos it's hard for them to say hey I'm just going to give this up and go try vaping and invest another you know 60 70 or 100 bucks depending on the store that you're going to go and what the fuck they're going to sell you you know so I don't know. We're trying to think of ways of how we have an edge in that competitive market since we don't have the billions, since we don't have the luxury of going into a Best Buy and setting up a liquid puff stand. We don't have that luxury as much as I would love to. Are you we saying just don't have that it. Uh, Best Buy is not carrying the number one flavor in the unsalted line, the watermelon peach? By the way, I didn't see any of this in your uh, at your store shelves either. Um, I, I, I figured you could work yeah. some kind well, of... Well, that's not my fault. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. That's it's yeah. not like I haven't tried. But you can get the delicious PP tears, the fruit PPTers, drops. Right. It's really, really delicious. Unfortunately, I'm not getting a percentage of PP tears. So no, you're, you're not. But you should buy it. You should go buy it. Yeah. Should, I mean, it's, it's based on my PP tears, so you should absolutely go Programming buy it. Programming notes tomorrow night on vape my noob channel which is a greek youtube channel very 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 popular influencer like the number one he's like the people sorrow of greece uh <laughs> we're gonna do a live from the lab that actually makes pp tears so we're gonna meet the lab see how the process of making liquid here in greece and let's see you know compare it to other labs that we have been to in the united states and canada and in europe and talk with the the owner and the in the direction of manufacturing liquid here. So, you know, I didn't put any sweetener in this liquid. It's it's just a delicious, you know, good fruit flavor medley. And uh, and it's, you know, I'm testing the waters as far as my relationship and how we, you know, I'm going to do because, you know, up to now, I haven't made any liquid in Greece. I either make it in Canada or I make it in Bulgaria and other countries. But uh, it's a good test to see how this relationship is going to work. And uh I don't believe in dropping like another issue that we have here in Greece is people are dropping these lines of like six, eight, ten different flavors in a lineup. So the problem with that is like out of the six, eight, ten, one or two are going to be good. You know, the rest of them are shit. And then as a as a store, I'm forced to bring this whole line in and it never sells. Uh, or it's a copy of another flavor that I have like seven profiles of. I bring up strawberry milkshake because it just sounds like it's something that's going to be popular in a store. I have seven flavor, different profiles of strawberry sh milkshake. If you're going to drop a line and add a strawberry milkshake, it's not going to sell, right? So I decided instead of dropping six flavors in a line, we'll take it flavor by flavor. So we're going to put this out and it's also frozen. There's two versions of it and that's going to be the flavor. And hopefully it's good and people will like it. And then, you know, three months later, I'm going to put a custard drops or I'm going to put a bakery drops or I'm going to put a uh, candy drops. Uh, candy drops does sound very, very childish, but um, but the label won't be. But that's that's the thinking behind it. And I think more stores would do would do better. Sounds good. Sounds yeah. the, it sounds the way it should be. Um, you were talking before. Uh, there's a couple of things that I, I want to recap. Uh, so you were talking before that you, you, that the Icos users, they don't want to hear about vaping, right? There's a lot of people that just don't want to hear about vaping. Why is that? Is is that because of all the negative press? Is that because Ivali? Is that, I mean, how about that? Have you talked to them about why they don't even want to think about vaping? Yeah. So surprisingly so in the Greek market, it's not so much Ivali or Corona or anything like that. Uh, we just have a bad name. You know, they they, they see stuff like this. And they're like, oh, man, you know, you and your, you know, uh, battery packs, you know, stuff like that. Uh, they also, you know, we do have that cult like appearance, uh, unfortunately, you know, with these guys, you know, that go out and, you know, and cloud up the places and, and, and give vaping a bad name um, and the hassle of it. You know, I mean, vaping is. It's it's not it's not trouble free, you know. There's there's fiddliness that's involved with liquids and trying and leaking and um, uh, maybe they tried it. They were sold uh, the wrong setup, which happened a lot in Greece in the last couple of years. I think it's just because we have a bad name. I mean, you know, they come into the store and there's you know, depending on what store they're going to go, they might go to a store that's not going to give them the right thing. They don't have employees that 
that listen to the demands of the customer. They don't. They have employees that only push what they think is the best setup, and it's usually what they're using as well too, which is not necessarily the right setup for smoking. I believe that a device like this will work for 95% of the smokers. That's a huge percentage, Phil. And I don't see people pushing this. They're like, oh, that, ah, that's you know, outdated. That's, uh, you don't need that. You know, they look at that because they're a vapor. And as a vapor, it doesn't excite them. This does not excite them. But this for a smoker is is the most important part is, is that, it, you know, you have the tubular action. It vapes like a cigarette. It has that restrictive. It's easy. Um, you know, it has a lot of things going for it. But most of the vape stores don't see it like that. And uh, and I think that that more has to do than Evali and Corona and everything else that goes around. I mean, again, people think I'm I'm being an asshole here, but I mean, I think that Phil, you can vouch that we have seen this multiple, multiple and we've heard it multiple times from people. And and Icos gives them that same feel of security that they had with a cigarette, where vaping does not give them that same security. Yeah. Um- it's I've said that for for many years now that that, you know, vaping, the, the vapors continue to market to vaping. The vaping industry continues to market to vapors and they very rarely uh, think about smokers. And I think if we continue to do that, uh, we're going to see like vaping in a timeline go like this and we're missing all of these customers. So it's just going to yeah. be this timeline and eventually vapors are going to die and vaping is going to go away if we don't start to think about things a, a little bit differently and do things a little bit differently. Um, Jackie was just at uh, Naples Vapor. Uh, she was at the Del Prado store. She told me she was going to be there. I said I'd go down there and visit. And I talked to her for a little while about, you know, what's it been like in the store? Uh but most important, what's the conversion been? Because Naples Vapor, they do a pretty good job with conversions. Jackie is really, she's, you know, we've talked to Jackie before. We've had her on the show. Um, you know, they're really concerned with conversions and conversions are way down, way down. And I said, well, what can we do? What can I do? What can I do to help that? Uh, I talked to Jackie. I talked to uh, to Nick Orlando, uh, maybe get more involved there. I even offered to Jackie, I said, let's do this. Let's do even if it's once a month, let's do a seminar for smokers to come in and hear the truth about vaping. I'll put together yeah. a little PowerPoint. I'll sit them down. I'll talk to them. Even if it's one person, I don't care. I don't care. They're not hearing the truth from everybody, from anybody else. Let me tell them the truth and let me back it up with studies, right? Yeah. I, I would be more than willing to, to do that for them if they if they take me up on the offer. Um, I, you know, like I, I want to help, I, I, but but I feel like, it, it's a losing battle because we're up against the, the force that mainstream media is. And our voices are so tiny compared to the power that that has. Yeah. Uh, Petro Nicoletto is in the, uh, in the store. Uh, I mean, in the, in the chat, he has a couple of stores down in Crete, Vapeport. Great guys helped a lot of you big supporter of our products as well too, but he's helped a lot of people, um, uh, quit smoking down there and and he says that you know there is there is a push in in media like everywhere right against vaping and we're seeing it more and more so down here in greece as well too our our um our trade association has not done, <laughs> has not done a very good a very very good job in combating that but then again that's pr it's something that's the same problem that we have in the states and nobody wants everybody here in greece is an expert nobody wants to listen to the real experts but um uh, the media does, you know, we do see some bad articles that 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 pop up here and there. But ultimately, I will tell you, uh, a great point that was brought up to me, Iquos only sells Iquos. <laughs> so if you look at those pictures that, I, that, that, that you showed earlier, you're not going to walk in and see 300 different types of devices, right. um, 800 different variations of strawberry custard, right? They only sell Iquos, and they're strictly focused on selling not to iQuos users, they're strictly focused on selling to smokers. So everything that you're gonna hear from the salesperson at the iQuos store is gonna be talking to a smoker, not talking to a digital device user or somebody that's gonna come inside and say, hey, can I try, what do you have here for me to quit smoking? And they look at this myriad of devices and feel overwhelmed. 
So even the design of the store is something that me and Phil taught when we did the Back to Basics seminar. Even the look of the stores needs to be lightened up a little bit and be sp spaced out to your new user, come here. Whatever it is, it doesn't have to be Inigan. It can be Joytech products that are geared towards beginners. It could be Aspire products that are geared towards beginners. Have a section in your store that has two, three options for people to quit smoking that are true and tested, and they're going to be able to get the coils, and they can work on converting smokers. Don't put them in this chaos of, of devices that's going to drive them crazy. Um, I think that I think more so, more than the media, I think that, the, 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 that we have this bad perception to a smoker of like, ah, you know, man, I'm just going to go where it's tried and it's, I know what I'm going to get there and I'm going to get the Icos. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I wonder what position vaping would be in, where we would be today if every, think about this, if every vape shop had the model of that alpha liquid vape shop. Yeah. Where our industry oh, God, would be today. Yeah. How we many more vapors there would be over smokers? We definitely would have the edge in that competition that I was telling you earlier. And right now we're losing. We're losing that competition more so and more so. I'm a big data guy. You know that, right? I look at the data from the stores. I get the feedback from the employees that I have here. I'm like, how many new customers we have? And the numbers are dropping. They're dropping. And uh, it has nothing to do with a store. The people that do come in to quit smoking, we, we have a high success rate of people quitting smoking and a high success rate of repeat clientele that brings in friends and family. But when you're converting 20 people a week between three stores and now you're down to three or six or seven, that means that something is happening. And it has nothing to do with us. It has to do with what the perception of the customer that we're competing with has on the product itself. And that means that Icos is doing a better job than us Yeah. again. Yeah. And you're going to see that in the U.S. as well, too. Mark my word, Phil. You're going to see that when, when, when Philip Morris decides to go balls to the walls with, with marketing of the Icos in America, it's going to be the end of the vape shop, period. Everywhere. Uh, how do you think the uh, uh, that was the serious stuff that I had to? Yeah, no, that, that, well, yeah, serious is a hard depressing. Yeah. yeah, it really is. How do you think the um, how do you think the PMTA is going to affect uh, the industry here? I mean, I wish I knew. I wish I had the answer. It seems like the FDA did not expect to um, to receive the amount of PMTAs that they have received, and and they made a couple of changes this week. One of the changes that they made was in a deficiency letter before you had 90 days to comply. And uh, now they changed that to 180 days hmm. due to COVID and due to some of the requests that we put inside that we said, you know, 90 days is just not sufficient enough. Um, you know, it's a great question. I just had a meeting with a client earlier and discussing, uh, talking about this. We just have to see what the FDA does with the PMTAs and, and, I, I got a hold of the Juul PMTA and I just briefly looked over it. I didn't, I didn't have time to dive into it like I did with the IQOS. Eventually I will when I have some time. But if you look at the PMTAs that we submitted, and I only submitted PMTAs that had scientific work with it. I didn't right. submit you know, the plain Jane one. Right. It's embarrassing. I mean, it, what we submitted versus the Juul that has 150 product-specific scientific um, studies submitted with their product, um, we, I mean, I just don't know what the FDA is going to do. The FDA might look at that at the Juul PMTA and say, okay, well, you meet the threshold for a harm reduction product, and then, then every other PMTA has to match that. Well, we can't do that. Mm -hmm. Nobody's been able to do that. Nobody's going to be able to do that in the allocated time. Um, maybe the FDA says, okay, well, if you've submitted some scientific work with your product, it, it appears to be, uh, you know, less harmful than cigarettes. So we will allow you to be on the market, but you're going to have to adhere to very strict post-market surveillance and reporting on your product. So, um, for example, I submit a PMTA for my, my Endura T18. I've submitted the emissions and the toxicology and the ingredient listing and all that. And the FDA says, okay, you can continue to sell this in America, but it, twice a year, you're going to have to submit to me a report that shows uh, recalls, uh, poisonings, 
um, initiation of the product, how many smokers are converting, behavioral study, what the perception of your product on the market is, what outlets are you selling it, what, what, um, what, what steps are you taking to keep these products away from kids, what help are you giving to distributors and to retailers to accurately describe your product when it's being sold to the consumer. I'm just bringing up you know, yeah. various things that the FDA might possibly ask for you. And then what you're going to have to have is teams in place to be able to monitor your product and submit these reports to the FDA. And the FDA might allow you to continue to sell as long as they don't see an uptake of, of youth with your product and it's helping smokers quit. Um, until the FDA makes a ruling on an open vapor uh, system, yet it'd be hardware or liquid, uh, it's, it's, very, it's impossible for us to answer that with any kind of definite way right now, which sucks, but, um, but that's just basically where we are. We're going to have to on a wait and see mode with the FDA and how they're going to react to the PMTAs and how they're going to react with enforcement as well, too. Yeah, They've yeah, clearly said they're going to go after pods and high nick. Uh, and what is our industry doing? Releasing more high pods in Nick. That's exactly what's happening in America. I, I don't want to call out companies, but I'm seeing emails constantly that come in that say, hey, look, now we have a new disposable that has 2,000 puffs and it has a disposable with a four mil tank and you know, more and more batteries just, you know, and it's, it's like our response to the problem is to create a bigger problem. A bigger problem. Uh, it's, it's so true. And, uh, and, it, and yeah, I mean, I don't ask me. I don't know if Dan Donahue is in the chat, but I ask any vape shop owner, they'll tell you that um, uh, it's, 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 uh, it, it's definitely. We, uh, we, we literally can't. Grow up. I mean, we literally can't win. We literally can't win because yeah. we're fighting the establishment and the industry at the same time. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. More so we're fighting our inner industry than what we're fighting the... Uh... Look, you know, I, I don't want people to misconstrue and say that I agree with the FDA doing this, but that's, that's the way it is. That's the law. You're either going to go into a black market or we try to adhere by the law. If we can't adhere by the law, obviously I will support a black market because people should be able to get their products that help them quit smoking. But if there is a pathway that we can take to legitimize this industry, that's going to help the competition equation that I was telling you earlier, right? Because that will help us compete with big tobacco on a more level playing field, meaning they have a reduced harm product that's given authorization in the market with the ICOs. We'll have a product that's given authorization and then just let the consumer decide on, on which product is better for them. Uh, but until we see a market authorization for an open vapor, I wouldn't hold my breath. I just... I, I just find it really, really hard that they're going to look at device that, that can be used with so many products on the market to, and give it authorization to, to get on there. I just find it really, really hard. Mm. Um, there, there's an interesting uh, uh, message here in the, uh, the chat from uh, Optimist because th th I think this is really important what he says here. Uh, he's talking about the ICOS and he says it's not just marketing. ICOS is the key. Listen to this. ICOS is a less dramatic move for a smoker. It smells similar, looks similar. Um, so it's hard for a product to compete when you have shops and vapors trying to sell clouds, right? And yeah, I that's think basically that, what we said, yeah. I mean, that, that goes along with what, what we've been saying for a long time, right? It, 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 simple um, and, and something that, that would be familiar to a smoker uh, in the draw, in, in the usage, in the look, and even in, you know, the tobacco flavors. We don't want to be limited to tobacco because I think that that works against sustainability, right? But it, it, we don't want to be, we don't want to give them a dramatic move when we put them into a vape device. We don't want to give them, uh, you know, a huge device as their first device. We don't want to give them uh, direct lung uh, as their first device. We want that 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 move to be a small move get them comfortable get them get them get them off the cigarette get them off the cigarette and then you know they can go where they want or stay where they are you know i love when i see and we we saw it just a, a few days ago in the uh, the platform group i love when i see i also saw it at your house a tank or a device that's just falling apart it's just the paint is coming yeah. off. It's like held together yeah. with rubber bands, right? It's like yeah. we, we saw that with the with the old guy in Greece, right? Uh -huh. 
to me, that is a device that is just doing its job and hanging in there, right? That's somebody who's like, it's that's their baby. That's their that's their their tank and their device, and they use that thing not to smoke anymore, and they don't give a shit about like the new stuff and the current stuff. All they know is that they got this thing in their hand, and it's falling apart. But but man. It satisfies them, and I love seeing that. I love seeing those those photos and those comments. Um, comment from Bill: Icos appears to be a popular option for smokers because of simplicity. Two, using a heat stick, remove the heat stick, uh, put a new one. No refilling, liquid, cool option settings, or flavor choices to worry about. I think you're right, uh, Bill. I'm gonna uh, little rant here. Just the other day, I was in a at the store in a Yabaras KV and a. Uh, uh, an Instagrammer was in there. First time I ever made him is uh, vapes, uh, Grease Vape Stories. I think he's on Instagram. Very nice guy. Uh, takes really nice pictures and you know promotes products and all that. And I'm going to tell you, give you an example of why we're losing this fight. So he turns to me and he says, um, classic vapor question. Uh, when are you going to come out with an RBA base for the Zenith? <laughs> Right. And I set him to the side and I said, I want you to pay very close attention to what I'm going to tell you so you can learn. I know you're a vapor and you're hyped. And, you know, I gave him an Aries two limited edition and he was all excited and all that. But I said, you're seeing it as a vapor. I, as Dimitri, in my partnership with Phil, decided if we're going to go and put our name behind a company, a single company and not make a product with every other fucking company, and just slap our name on it. We want to make sure that we're going to create a product that can help people quit smoking. The Z coil is such a product. It's a product that's designed to help people quit smoking. Imagine if I create a tank that has an RBA base inside. You, we just go against everything that we just talked about earlier about the simplicity, about the ease of use, about how we can get new customers. There's literally a hundred companies that offer RBA bases out there. Go buy another fucking product. I don't care. <laughs> it doesn't bother me. But if your thinking is, I need an RBA base, then you're not the client that I'm going after. Right. It's not. It's not. There's plenty of products out there that can satisfy that 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 portion, which is a very very small portion. I have to reiterate. It's a three percent portion of people that constantly are looking for the latest and the greatest. So that is one of the reasons why I believe that we're losing this fight. If you want people to quit smoking, you have to make keep it simple, stupid. You have to keep it with that same mentality that the IQOS is going. And trust me, the IQOS is not as simple. It's simple, but it's not as simple as you would think. Okay. There's still maintenance. There's charging, there's maintenance, there's cleaning, there's a timed aspect to it. In fact, the dinner that I had a couple of days ago, the woman's battery charger for the device was dead. And she was arguing with her husband to use his battery charger device to charge her device. And they literally negotiated something like, I'll give you butt sex. No, something like that. I mean, it wasn't butt sex. <laughs> I don't want to say that. But, you know, they negotiated some kind of a deal for him to give her the, the battery pack so she can charge her device and use it as well, too. So it's not as simple, but it's way simpler than the, the, the vaping route, if we want to make it that route, because there are simple options on the market for vaping as well, too, even if they're not popular with the vapors, and they should be more popular with the vapors. Uh, you, it, it's funny that you you mentioned two things uh, during this live. You mentioned Z-Coil several times. You mentioned uh, before how it's it's scary uh when there's like a new product uh, on the market and you know if if a smoker gets used to that new product and all of a sudden that new product goes away or they can't get the coils anymore right uh you know that that does force somebody to to move on to something else i can say this about z coils and 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 i, I can say this because uh just today and yesterday i had to do two write-ups for uh, a new product that Dimitri and I are going to be putting out with Inakin, okay, uh, that we, we can't talk about. That, It'll be... Uh, that has USB-C. I just want to put it out there, okay? <laughs> the, the days of micro USB are finally over at Inakin. You're going to see USB-C now. Yes, rejoice. Yes, we hope. Um, we hope. And one of the things that I mentioned in the, uh, the write-ups that I did 
was the fact that the Z coil is well established, yeah. readily available, and will be around for many years to come. I think that's really important. I think that's really important. And you know what? To be fair, I can say the same thing about the Aspire BBC coil. Absolutely. That thing has been around forever. That thing is probably responsible for a lot of conversions. Yes. I'm happy now that we have the Z coil, which is doing the same thing and is going yes. to be around for just as long, hopefully longer. Right. Every store you're going to go in Greece, you're going to find Z coil. Yeah. Every, even pharmacies and places that you would not think, like in some rural areas that they don't have vape shops, you're going to find a Z coil there. And most likely you're going to find an Aspire BBC coil as well, too. Uh, but the slide really has taken over Greece as far as the starter, the, the starter tank. They combine it with whatever, either a Pico or now with a Chroma or whatever. And they make a nice kit out of it. And the slide really has taken off, surprisingly enough for me. And I think that the price, because it's cheaper than the Zenith, is what, what's really driving that. But, you know, from a, from a product perspective, you have a product that's been on the market literally three years and it continues to sell. We released the Zenith in the Z-Qual series three years ago, and it continues to sell. I can't say that about a lot of the products that are on the market today. Even vape shop customers that come to our shop and say, hey, I have this. Do you have a call for it? And it's a device that was released three months ago, but guess what? There's no calls on the market. The device didn't sell very well or whatever the reason is. You, the company closed in China or whatever. You can't find that call. And that puts us in a very difficult situation as, as sellers as well, too. My boys are trained to say, hey, listen, I, I don't have that call. We can't find it on the market. I can give you a replacement tank with a discount to get you into something cheap that you're going to be able to find the coils. So we try to make the sell that way, but not trying to take advantage of them. We don't want them to go out and spend another $100 for a setup. Keep your device. This tank is compatible with that. It's 20 bucks, and you're always going to find Z coils. So we're trying to make that transition for them. But imagine if that person did not have the patience, went to one or two stores and didn't find the coil, or thought to himself and said, man, that store that sold me that tank fucked me over. They try to take advantage of me. I'm just going to go buy a pack of cigarettes. Yeah. It's just easier, right? And fuck this vaping thing. You think that that doesn't happen? I guarantee you that it happens. Yeah. How, how, much, um, how much training do you give your employees? And I would imagine that your employees have to be in line with your thinking. Oh, absolutely. I, uh, I, before anybody starts to work for me, and there's a couple of them in the chat today, but um, they will tell you that the first thing that I discuss with them is my philosophy. Before we talk about any kind of, you know, marketing, business strategy, we talk about philosophy. And my philosophy is smokers. This is what I believe is the future for vaping. This is how I want to run my stores. You have to believe in my philosophy. My philosophy is I don't give a fuck what you're vaping. When a new customer comes in, you're going to put down the tube. You're going to put down the 17 battery mods. You're going to pick up something simple and you're going to talk to them as a smoker. You're not going to talk to them as a, as a vaping. My philosophy is try to get somebody started with as cheap as possible, not with the most expensive, even if they ask for it because they saw their buddy using a dual battery device, try to sway him to the inexpensive 20 euro, 25 euro route. And trust me, we're going to make the money in the long run. My philosophy is that for every advanced vapor that comes into the store, I want to have the 60 year old lady that comes in. I want to have the smoker comes in. I want to have your average Joe that comes in. We want to balance that equation of advanced vapors to new or your average person that quits smoking. Once they understand that, that, that philosophy and they agree with it, then we can get to more technical as far as, you know, what the products we're going to be pushing, how we're going to do it, how are you going to become a nicotine specialist? But first of all, it's that philosophy. And if you don't believe in that philosophy, you can't work for me. It's very, very simple. Love and it. I don't take it personal with anybody. I tell them this is it. If you like it, you know, you have a future here with this company and whatever we're going to do in the future, uh, as far as growing and opening up more stores, you're going to be a part of it. You're going to be part of that base. But that's the main thing. And I believe that all my guys do a fantastic job of that. Um, and they all believe in that. It gets difficult sometimes because you do become complacent in vaping. You know, you you chase the dragon sometimes, and you're like, oh, I got to go through this 45 minute spiel again with this this smoker. Uh, so it's it's always 
it's always a struggle for me to keep them ignited and, and have that fire behind them. Yeah. And sometimes they stray, but I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I'm able to get there and just pull out the whip and, and put them back in shape, you know. Are you a good person to work for? Yeah, I'm very, very easygoing. I, I, I'm, I'm, I don't get in their business. I let them do what they need to do unless I need to step in. When I step in, I'm an asshole. Uh, but but if I have to step in, I don't step in very often. Uh, but but when I have to step in and put them in line, yeah, I become an asshole. But other than that, I let them do that. They all know what to do. I don't have to tell them. You know, sometimes, like I said, they just get complacent. You know, I'm very picky about, you know, I want to have an Anakin product post on my Facebook pages every two days. Because I work for Anakin, it's what we push the most in the store. We're authorized retail. We're authorized distribution in Greece. And sometimes, you know, they forget, you know, so I have to step in. I was like, hey, you know, we talked about this, stuff like that. But other than that, I let them do their thing. Oh, by yeah. the way, super chat from uh, from Ed. Yeah. What happened to the Enjoy King? It was so good for smokers. I think they cheaped out. But uh, you're absolutely right. The Enjoy King was a fantastic product. I think what happened is when Enjoy changed management, if you remember, at some point, they made a huge attempt to break into the open vapor liquid industry with the artistic line and all these head changes that they had there that they got rid of it. A huge mistake, in my opinion. But the Enjoy Daily that they have now in the market is a pretty good product. Uh, I wish we could go back to that form factor and soft tip of a cigarette again. But unfortunately, in America, you can't do that anymore because of the PMTA. Uh, Zenith Coil, let me see if I have any comments here. If uh, I were to move to Greece, can I get a job at one of the liquid puffs? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, Absolutely. Thanks. All right. Yeah, I got a janitor position open now. Oh, I've got a model. Hmm. You can just model the products and okay. take pictures for it <laughs> if you want. So. No, look, I'm gonna be opening a couple more stores in Athens uh, for sure. Uh, the coronavirus is really what's what's stopping me right now. I mean, it's put a dent into any plans. The government announced the other day that they're gonna have some packages for small businesses to expand and some help as far as like hiring new employees and creating jobs. But all through the coronavirus, I didn't furlough any of my employees. I didn't uh, tell my employees you're going to get less pay. I'm not going to tell you stay home for a few weeks and then come back to work. I paid them. Right. I paid them all at a loss for, my, for me and my business. But that's how much I care about them. And I want them to have work here. Um, but unfortunately, the coronavirus kind of slowed me down into like right now I should be opening up my fourth store. And we're not there yet because of the coronavirus put everything back, you know, a year. Mm, so, right. but, I, but I do want to open up a couple more locations. I do believe that we have a really good branding. We have a good name. Uh, we, we want to be the vape store that vapors send smokers to. That's what I want to be known as. I don't want to compete with other people in the market. We're trying to chase over this 3% of vapors and we're all going to go over the same customer selling the same liquid and tank and then start a price war with everybody. I don't want to do that. But I've always said that, you know, that feel that in every fucking corner they're selling cigarettes. We should be on every corner selling vapor products as well, too. So that's just what my goal is here is to be in every corner selling vapor products. You know, <clears throat> you were talking about the, um, uh, the, the, the basically the foot traffic uh, because you don't have a lot of tourism in, in Greece right now. Well, you don't have any tourism in Greece right now, right? Is anybody allowed? Right. In? Okay. And uh, some, some countries they've allowed in and then they slowed it down again. They opened it up for a while because, you know, everybody was going broke and now they're, they pulled it back from various areas and that, but the, the, the third store that I opened is right dead center of the tourism area and there's no tourism. So, well, so. that's why, that's why I froze the video at this point right here. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. I I've been here, I've been in this area right yes. here and I know yes. what this normally looks like i know yes. what this area normally looks like i've seen it yes. and you it, can't walk on yeah, a normal it, day it's, here it's really slow and you can tell you can tell just by this 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 still uh from the video that it's really slow number one number two uh you can also tell that uh, dimitri you really got to get on the skinny jeans <laughs> kick you, <laughs> yeah, know, yeah, you no, know we no. travel all over the world and neither of us uh have the skinny jeans and i think we need to uh i, I think we need to skinny jean it up. if once travel starts up again i think we both need just as a, maybe as a joke more than anything else we need to skinny jean it i think yeah right? the other th the other thing our wonderful mayor did here in in athens is he 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 can't he he bought these big pots of flowers of trees and and started dropping them in front of businesses 
to stop people from parking and to like, you know, make it more green. So now the police is here walking up and down the street, cutting tickets. Uh, you see, you see that pot, that big pot right there, right there, that, that, that white one. Yeah, we, the taxpayers paid 500 euros for every one of those, by the way. And you see them all the way up and down the street. So nobody can park in front of the store. The police is literally writing citations to motorcycles up and down the street all day, right? So they're trying to deter people from parking. Nobody can just like pull in and get something. So if you don't have foot traffic to go into the store, then it's very difficult for you to stop there and come into the store. You, you literally have to be walking, going somewhere else to purchase something and then say, okay, I'm going to go buy a liquid puff and get a liquid or get something like that. But um, it's just one after the other, man. It was just, it was just, just bad. I do believe things are going to recover and we're just going to keep pushing. We're having, you know, the big shinding this week and hopefully that's going to draw some people. I literally, because I'm doing this, this show so late, had to park three blocks over at a 24 hour parking garage. That way I can go get my car afterwards when I'm done here, but it's not, it's, it's definitely trying times for me down here yeah yeah i you know i know we said we were only going to go an hour and i know i i started late but we're into it for about uh an hour and 40 minutes now look at us yeah yeah um, let me see if we have any questions to cover and or well, any comments i have one more thing then... to go over uh yeah. some really oh, exciting exciting news um i bought a new pair of sketchers Did you? They're, they're actually not sketchers they're okay so i found them on this like i found them on the sketchers website Right here they are. I think these are really nice looking kicks, man. Look at these. Look at those bad boys. Huh? Those are nice. Right. Look at that. Look at those. Those are right? nice. Those are nice. All right. Yeah. But that's what's, a nice what's pair of shoes? Right. But what's even more exciting uh, than these shoes are because I are those Skechers? Hold on. Are those Skechers really? Well, so they came from this. They're they're Mark Nason, Los Angeles. But I think the Skechers. This is like an exclusive for Skechers. Wow. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, high end, a high end sketcher. Like high end sketcher. Me, and maybe that's what it is, right? But like, I've never ordered sketchers online, right? I always go to the, the, the store and I went to the store looking for that model. They didn't have it. So I ordered them online. And I can't believe the stuff that I got with that order. So I got, I got me, um, some sketch. I got me a Skechers face mask. Wow. Look, look at that. This. That is an outfit. That right? is not like Skechers fit. face mask. That is a baby Skechers mask for sure. Um, I got, I got, I got. Thank you for, for choosing Skechers. Wow. Uh, unfortunately, there's no QR code for me to scan to sh to show me how yeah. to use my Skechers. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, I got a like a catalog that is more like. I mean, it's it, it's it's wow. Like you, I can't wait. The, I can't wow. wait to, to sit on the toilet bowl <laughs> and read through this catalog. Now I got more stuff, but wait. There's, There's more. more. <laughs> I got the Skechers. Look, this is a Skechers um, cell phone tablet holder, right? Look at that. It says Skechers on it. Here, let me go. Let me go full. Uh, there. See, look at that. Wow. Right uh huh. Okay. That's amazing. And and I I have this. This is a gift from Skechers. I don't even know what it is. I'm gonna open it live. Open it. It's a T-shirt. It's gotta be a T-shirt. Or a, you think it's a T-shirt? It could be a cum rag. It could be, I don't know. I mean, it's it could a, be a cum no, it's, it's definitely not a t-shirt. It's a, uh, what is that? Oh, it's a bag. It's a bag. Look at that. It's a Skechers backpack. Wow, boy. If I see you out in public with that, I'm going to fucking beat you upside the head for sure. No, I'm going to wear it right now. <laughs> Put it on your bike when you're riding your bike. Yeah, look, I got my Skechers <laughs> mask on. I got my Skechers backpack. You look, you look like you just got out of high school. But there's, there's one more thing. Oh, boy. And these are coming your way. These are for you. I'm going to be mailing them to you. Hopefully, they'll be at your house. Um, when I get back. When you get back. Okay. You got me some Skechers playing cards that you can use in your next poker night. Oh, yeah. look at that. Wow. <laughs> Unbelievable. I'm, all because I ordered a pair of sneakers from Skechers. Hey, so can you order me a pair of sneakers like that and send it to my house? 11 and a half? Yeah, you, want, you like them? They look good, buddy. I ain't going to lie to you. 11 and a half? Yeah. See, okay. Or 12, 12. Well, which is it, man? Did, did they fit good? Did you try them? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so the numbers are accurate? Yeah, they are. Yeah, 12. It's absolutely an 11, yeah. Yeah, order me a 12. A 12? How Are they expensive? They weren't that bad. Okay, order me a 12 and send it to my house. What do you, what uh, do you comment, 
Because you always you always get me really good gifts. So what do you got coming up? You got something coming up? Got my birthday. Yeah, that's your birthday gift from me. Okay. All right. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate okay. it. Look, done. I would have paid you for it. No, no, no. Uh, no. That's good. This a way, couple comments. A couple comments. Yeah, this way, I don't have to think about a birthday gift for you because <laughs> buying for you is really difficult because you get me such like it awesome is. fucking it crazy is. gifts. So it is. Yeah. All right, Frank and Meiser, are any new Z coils coming? Yes. Well, we talked about the point three, which is an RDL coil. That's what I'm using here now. That's going to be in the next product that we're going to launch. We can't tell you. It's coming in October. So here in the next two, three weeks, we'll hope, hopefully we'll be able to show you the final version. But we have the point three that's coming, which is an RDL coil. And then we're working on a new MTL coil that's probably going to be released around Christmas. Uh, an innocent eight says tentacle sea creature. So if we go to Greece, we're stuck with bloody Inakin or what? I don't know what that comment means, but I sell a bunch of stuff in my store. I don't sell just Inakin. It's very Inakin heavy, but whatever. I don't know what that comment means, but yeah, just, you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, no, you can find any kind of products in Greece. We're not like a third world country. You know, there's everything. There's Joytech, Aspire, a lot of great modders that make beautiful devices like this over here. You know, very, very wonderful. Nice country. If they let you in. That, that, actually, that's that's a really good question um, because most of the uh, the modders, most of the high end modders, the the greater percentage of them come from Greece. How's that industry? Yes. How's that been for them? Uh, you know, I'm 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 hoping to go to one of the modders' uh, workshop and shoot some video for you for the DP show, uh, and maybe have a talk with them and see. But I mean, you know, for them, usually they're on lists, uh, they're in private groups, the way that they sell. So. It hasn't really changed for them because most of the stuff that they do is via the mail anyway, so it doesn't doesn't really affect them. But the global economy is down; it's going to have a problem with uh, with um, yeah, uh, sure. with sales in general. Our sales, even in the other two stores that are still doing well, it's down. You know, yeah, it's it's just a, it's just a global thing that's going on. All right. Well, I, I said everything that I needed to say. Um, I, we, we showed the videos. We showed the pictures. I showed my sketcher stuff. Um, I, so now uh, it's time for me to go fill my uh, my my new camel. Look at this. My new Camelback water bottle. The insulated podium. Highly recommended. R rated very high on Amazon. I'm going to go fill this yeah. with some ice and water and, and go for my ride now. Yeah. Well, I, I uh, by the way, I brought some of these coils to give them to, to some guys to test out down here. I only brought three coils. OK, so I put one for me with the, the fruit drops because I wanted to try on the, the longevity. And it's vaping really, really good, by the way. I mean, I'm really shocked. This at 35 watts on a Z coil. Good. It's just. It's keeping up. No problem. No issues. So then I give what's, one. To what's the ratio of the liquid you're using? Uh, this one is 70, 30. Okay, good. Uh, then I uh, I give one to Vape My Noob, which is a YouTuber here, and then I give one to Vape Army. It's another YouTuber that works for me here in uh, in the Athens store. So I said, guys, try them out. Give me a full report, type of liquid, longevity, wattage. And that way I can report back to Anakin. So Vape My Noob is still using his uh, and uh, and is enjoying it. Vape Army burnt his. In uh, less than 24 hours. Really? Because. What was he running it at? What was he doing? Because. Here it comes. He won't admit it. But, but I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. <laughs> he opened up his Zenith Pro to fill it. And left it open. He opened his, his port to, to fill it and left it open? Correct. So what does that do? When you open up the Zenith port to fill, it yeah. shuts down the liquid flow inside. Yeah. <laughs> so he wasn't he getting any liquid to the coil. <laughs> Burnt it. That's that's my top quality employee here. <laughs> uh, so New basically, a, so basically, yeah. what you're saying is it worked as advertised. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> New Wave Dave, five dollars super chat. Your romance is so strong. I can smell the lube from here. Love you guys. Keep getting people off the stinkies. Thank you so much, New Wave. Yeah. Thank absolutely. You. Um, Thank you. PSS asks, does the LE come both in 22 and 24? Yes, absolutely. Just go to my Facebook page and uh, look at the picture. I just posted a picture of both the 22 and the 24 yesterday. And as far as the, uh, see you, Bill. Uh, uh, as far as the serial number, I want to clarify this. Every model starts at zero 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 which both me and phil have i have two zero zero zeros phil has two so 22 24 onyx and flint 
there's four variations of the Aries LE. Every one of them starts at zero. So you're not going to have like one, two, three, four, five, and then six on the other side. So when you look at the serial number on the bottom, know that for your size and color, it started at zero. And then you can judge where, where it's going to end up as far as the numbers are concerned. Right. Right. Okay. And uh, we'll, we'll keep it, obviously we'll keep everybody posted uh, as, as far as the, uh, the new product that's coming out. Yeah. I mean, you'll hear all about it uh, on my Very page, excited. on Dimitri's page, on tasterjuice.com. There'll be videos. Uh, I'm going to have to shoot tutorial uh, videos for that because it, it is going to be a platform product. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, we are putting together a, um, oh, the, what's the, uh, the forum, the, uh, help me out, D. The forum, what forum, the forum that we're going to do the um, uh, the Aries two, uh, the Aries two, the Aries two, uh, and the Aries two LE. Uh, the, we're going to have a, a forum thread where we're going to be answering questions and doing. Oh, on ECF, yeah, on ECF. ECF. I, I could, yes. I couldn't remember ECF. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so we got that coming up, um, and we'll let you guys know more about that. Obviously, the uh, the Smoker Show. We are in between. Uh, seasons right now uh, we're still looking for some ideas to come back uh, to that show with uh, if not we are we are going to we're going to be repeating some stuff right yeah uh, because you know the whole idea of that show is we want smokers to come and, and to watch it and to understand what it is we're doing maybe we'll cut it down to an hour uh, instead of doing yeah. a full two-hour show but I, I think it's important and, and I, I still think that's one of the most important shows that we do uh, yes. So we're going to definitely continue that effort, and uh, and that's about it. That's what give I us some ideas. Say. Katarina here says that she's going to give you the mask that they give the kids to school. Uh, here, the kids have to wear a mask to school. And what happened is the government—I don't know who was in charge of this—gave yeah. these kids masks that are XXXXL. They could use them for umbrellas if they had to. I mean, it covers up their whole face. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I don't know who screwed up in the government to do that. But Katarina says she's going to give you her kid's mask to make sure that it covers your face. That's okay. Right. Okay. So basically what she's saying, uh, you need an XXXL mask. She's saying mask. I got That's a giant saying. cabeza is what she's, what she's saying. saying. Yeah, I just got a um, – uh, I'm going to be doing a Geek Vape uh, review, and they sent me one of their shirts. And this is a triple X. Okay. Triple X. That's it's probably like a medium for us. It's, it's maybe a large. Yeah. <laughs> maybe yeah. a large, yeah. Yeah. We should do a Reddit ECR. AMA. We did that a couple of years ago. We did an AMA for uh, for uh, for Reddit. Maybe we'll revisit that. We have we have some people that that are monitoring Inakin posts on uh, on Reddit. So that'd be cool. I'd be down to do that again as well too. But yeah. uh, you know, one of the things that me and Phil have, I, I again, I was having this discussion with. I took uh, the guys out for a drink that, that worked for me. Uh, and you know, one of the things that that we have, I think that is. You know, it don't I don't want to sound cocky, but um, one of the things that I think me and Phil differentiate from other influencers, if you want to call it, in this industry is that we're very accessible. Too much. Accessible, I was just going to say my, too much, in my opinion. <laughs> but we truly believe that being there and helping people and answering their questions is important. So if you send me a message or you send Phil a message or an email, I'm like, we, we are going to respond. And again, to our detriment sometimes, because it does take a, a, a lot of our time away, but we're there, we're there for you. If you have any questions, join our Facebook group, the platform group on, on Facebook, manufactured by Inakin. We try to answer all the questions there. Send us a message, anything that we can do to help. We're always there for you, especially when we're trying to help people quit smoking, which is very, very important. So yeah. the reason why I just went back to the, uh, to the other desk is because I wanted to uh, share a, a part, another part of that letter. I was talking before about the, um, you know, the, the Z coils being well-established wildly. Uh, so this is actually what I said. Z coils are well-established, widely available, and will be there for many years to come. Millions of people worldwide have used and enjoyed Z-Coil based products with life-changing results and success in both smoking to vaping conversions and vaping enjoyment. Okay, so that's what I said about uh, Z-Coils in that write-up. And you just mentioned, um, you know, like our focus on, on friendliness, easiness, and that, that's also in this uh, letter. Because yeah. in the letter I say that the Inican Platform Series is known for its beginner friendliness and outstanding online support in Facebook groups, forums, and video tutorials. And I almost put access to Phil and Dimitri, but I thought better. <laughs> <of it. laughs> 
Stop doing that. Stop yeah, doing that. <laughs> Jimmy, can you make Phil wear pants on camera? Nah, he's in Florida, man. He's just, uh, you know, living that that retired, uh, you know, shorts, man. shorts, God. shorts life. You know, shorts, I mean, it is what it is. Skechers backpack. Skechers backpack. You look like a you look like a ninja turtle. <laughs> this is like a teenage <laughs> ninja turtle is what you look like with that thing on. <laughs> oh boy boy yeah that but that's it yeah we covered it all i gotta go i gotta uh, i've been uh you know just uh going back and forth all day and working and um tomorrow morning i gotta meet a real estate agent in the morning then in the evening i'm going to the lab then thursday i'm gonna go out and meet our good friend in Calquida, you know where we went and had the calam the big calamari Oh, at the, yeah. the vape store oh yeah uh so i'm very very excited about that then friday we're starting the three-day weekend here for the store so i'll be here meeting and greeting and showing the aries ali and the fruit so it's just a busy busy time you know but uh i i remodeled a few things in the house i'm gonna go to andros next week to get some remodeling done there i'm trying to get everything done before i come back but uh busy yeah uh, send me some but... send me some new photos of the house send me some updated photos of the house yeah, I have very few yeah, photos of the house. I will. When I get there, I'll shoot some video too and, and bring back to you. Okay. 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 Anything All else? All right, buddy. That's it. Thanks okay. everybody for hanging out. Thanks and, for uh, thanks for uh, waiting through the uh, the technical difficulties. I I certainly appreciate that. Hey, look. If you get 170 people waiting for you to go live, uh, that means you're doing something well. So don't worry about it. It happens. Just don't let it fucking happen again. I'm fucking in Greece <laughs> with a slow fucking internet over here. I always fucking make shit break all the time. I have to wait 15 minutes for your computer. No, I'm just kidding, buddy. I don't know. It happens. It is. It's fun. You were very understanding and, and compassionate when it was going on yes. because you had to see me. I was ru- like a I've, like a fucking animal yelling. I've turned a new page, Phil. It is what it is. Buddy. I hope so. I hope so. It's all right. New page. That's it. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you again soon.